Okay, Blank here with another video. This time I want to talk about one of my favorite action MMOs or action games in general and that is Fantasy Star Online 2. Uh, after seeing Cyberbot's video on NGS, uh, I did want to talk about the uh, combat and kind of movement in these type of games and how uh, these latest, the latest these latest uh, action games, these uh, Genshin impacts of the world, and uh, tower fantasies, and how they kind of misunderstand the complexity and movement, and uh, what they get wrong in their kind of action, and uh, how their actions limit player ex expression. Uh, I think these games are kind of, uh, I think a lot of people fall for these games and they're very, uh, press X to do cool, which, uh, I'm surprised that a lot of people are kind of, uh, falling for these tricks again, because this was, uh, this, these, these kind of, things uh, were were prevalent back in the day uh, you know quick time events how people really hated that and uh, I think people are falling in these trappings of uh, falling for these systems where uh, you don't really, really the player really doesn't have any kind of control or uh, expression in them uh, I'm also going to talk about Tower of Fantasy since that's the most I have experience with. Uh, I quit that game because uh, I really don't like how uh, the weapons you have are limited to the gacha and the, the, the only weapons that are truly viable in a sense are the SRs. I really I think that's pretty predatory for a action game that does want to kind of uh, uh, further that does want to have kind of good combat uh, you would it would be uh, pretty pretty weird for a, a, like a DMC game to lock weapons behind some kind of uh, system some kind of gotcha system or paywall because the weapons are the main draw of these action games. Uh, and I think uh, Tower of Fantasy kind of, it could have been, it could have been better than Genshin. Uh, but its system was, uh, I wouldn't say too close, or too similar, but rather too limiting. Uh, these games have uh, one of the most modern, one of the things that bothers me the most in these games is their uh, three dash system and how uh, and how uh, kind of complex movement, which is uh, abusing iframes or canceling uh, dashes into other dashes uh, and so on, uh, kind of. Uh, uh, how kind of how uh, don't really have any any express purpose other than uh, uh, yeah they don't really have any purpose other than moving but uh, <laughs> I guess like that's kind of some, that does sound kind of stupid but uh, in PSO2 uh, dashing uh, Dashing with iframes, that is, that is really, really important. Uh, Tower Fantasy, I'm just remembering now, did have the, uh, this dodge that gives you witch time. But uh, one of the glaring flaws in that is that this, this witch time kind of thing, this, uh, I forgot what it's called, but uh, I'm just going to call it witch time because that's, that's basically what it is. Uh, it's, it's on a cooldown. And after you, 
activate it and you do a perfect dodge again it kind of doesn't mean anything because you'll still get hit because the dodge doesn't have iframes because the uh, uh and that kind of that kind of ruins the complexity and how the uh, player interacts with the bosses uh the game becomes less about uh how you how how you position yourself relative to the boss uh and changes it into a numbers game uh to to how fast you can take the boss and i think in action games that is not something you would not something you want the player to do killing the boss uh very quickly uh i did see the the cruel drill trick and on one hand i think that is kind of that's kind of a thing action games i do need to have i do like that trick but on the other hand uh i think it kind of reinforces the notion that you need to be doing uh a kind of a set amount of damage uh an obscene amount of damage rather than uh worrying about your position relative to the enemies um let's see further talking about the krill drill trick uh, I think glitches like that are very integral to action games and in the sense that it, uh, it sets apart the beginner from the professional. Uh, the beginner would only engage in these kind of mechanics in on a surface level. Uh, for instance, uh, to a beginner a dash would be a dash in a three hit combo would only be uh, three hit combo whereas the professional would think about these mechanics in the abstract uh, they would see a dash maybe kind of uh, experiment and see if they could cancel their dash with an attack and if it works then maybe it uh, kind of shortens the distance or maybe uh, furthers the distance and maybe they can dash again and do like uh, dash attack kind of uh, movement or they could dash and then jump and then maybe that takes them a little bit further and uh, I think stuff like that adds to the longevity and the adds to the progression and also adds to the contradiction that the enemies they would face enemies players would face could have like for instance they could uh, enemies could limit player movement or uh, deny player movement uh, uh, for instance uh, I was playing Metal Gear Rising and I did find it really interesting that whenever you tried to do a uh, jump heavy attack on the final boss uh, he would grab you midair and kind of punish you for that and I think uh, uh, stuff like that could be done more in these games uh, um, and uh, Tower Fantasy uh, it, it kind of had it uh, but uh, the issue of a lot of enemies being just uh, damage sponges for the player uh, in the player having lots of maybe too many defensive tools kind of uh, made these these movement actions and how the the player would position themselves kind of irrelevant because uh, you could just uh, what's the point of the point of moving or dodging if you could just just uh, take the head take the hit head on and not have any repercussions or consequences in it uh uh in, G in ngs in ngs uh movement kind of matters but only in the sense that you would always be uh, doing a counter attack 
uh, since counter attacks output the most amount of damage uh, and kind of renders uh, PAs irrelevant in their amount of damage and the fact that uh, PAs and NGS have uh, a lot of lag frames and can't really cancel them into anything meaningful uh, position wise um, so you would always be countering uh, in contrast to uh, regular PSO2 where uh, PAs were very simple uh, and in that simpleness they had uh, death uh, it's been a long time since I played the game but uh, I uh, one instance I could think of is uh, Asagiri, the the movement PA the, that Braver had, uh, which was uh, had uh, so several uses uh, in terms of uh, not really in terms of damage, but uh, kind of uh, you could do a lot with it, uh, such as getting away from the boss or. Uh, or uh, closing in on the boss. Uh, uh, you could also uh, uh, add a get, get creative with it. Uh, maybe cancel it into another PA. Oh, another PA uh, you could do is the uh, I forget what it's called, but it's when you it's when Braver does the uh, down slash. Uh, that one was uh, very interesting because you could uh, jump and then uh, do the PA and then jump again and then kind of repeat that and that was a uh, kind of way you could uh, output uh, damage equal to the its, mo its most damaging attack which was uh, Sakura Endo type 0 uh, and it also uh, that PA also served a different use uh, getting down to the ground uh going from air to air to ground and uh going from uh, going from ground to air that's also a very important thing in uh, action action games uh, especially ones that want to have kind of freedom of movement is the uh, how the player transitions from uh one what should I call it? Uh, I guess state. Yeah, one state to the other. You know, you have your your grounded state and your falling state, or in air. Uh, it's very important. Uh, but uh, in Tower Fantasy, that kind of that that kind of uh, abstraction doesn't matter. And I think that's what's killing the game that's what's uh, kind of not sending it apart from uh, its rival Genshin Impact uh, if it had if the game had kind of explored these mechanics further instead of uh, adding more of this uh, adding more kind of areas and content that really doesn't that's just uh, kind of icing on the cake it doesn't really uh, matter uh, if the game if the game uh, focus more on its uh, abstractions and combat I do believe it could have uh, overtaken Genshin it could have been the Genshin killer but uh, as, as it likes to as people like to say uh, but uh cause uh, Genshin and on the on the, the surface level uh as an action game, uh, it's it's very easy. It's very easy uh, to become, but uh, so many uh, developers uh, just see see it for its uh, see the icing, but not the cake. They they just see uh, the surface level of what the the game could do and mimic that rather than uh, focusing on. Uh, what makes an action game uh, heavily beloved, you know, Devil May Cry is seen as the, the 
kind of face of this genre even though uh, I would consider other action games such as uh, Kingdom Hearts or uh, let's see other ones oh yeah PS Fantasy Star on two, online 2 for instance I would consider them uh, a lot better than Don't Make Cry as an action game but uh, yeah, I do hope that uh, this genre finds its footing again and uh, makes good games. <laughs>